Hey guys, it's 5 a.m. in the morning. It's the day before Thanksgiving. We're headed out to work. We're working at a collision center today. It's They busted out a piece of floor inside and we got to replace it. We got a small window of time to do it. So we're going to do it today. Luckily, we're inside because it's raining today. So here's where we're going. I'll show you right now. Hey, good morning, everybody. So they're installing a brand new lift in this garage. Work, work on cars here. It's a collision center. So this this section needs to be really really flat. So they had a guy the guy come in, busted it out, prepped it, and they hired us to come in and just pull the concrete. So that's what we're here today. We're going to use the laser and just get it flat. So when they set the lift on it, the, you know, the lift is going to set real nice. So where the concrete just showed up, fix it up. We should be getting going here in a couple minutes. Now the guy we're working for is the guy that does the lift. It's, we're not actually working for the guys that own the garage. So he hired us, he's from out of state. He came in, He actually he hired a guy to come in and saw the concrete out. And then, so the guy that saws the concrete gets rid of the concrete. And then he came in himself and he had to actually dig this down. By the time they sawed the concrete out, they figured out it was only a four inch thick floor and they were assuming it was six inches. So he had to dig out two inches of dirt, get rid of all that as part of his prep, um, compact it, level it, and then he had to put that green pipe in to continue the drain, and then he put the wire mesh in, and that was kind of his prep, which was the day before this. So Monday, the guy cuts the concrete, gets rid of it. Tuesday, this guy does his prep, and here it is Wednesday, the day before Thanksgiving, we're trying to get this thing poured back in so these guys can go right back into business, you know, without this holding them up. And it was, you know, it, I said it was raining this morning. It actually, we actually got a couple inches of snow this morning. So the roads were a little slippery. And we, we waited at least until light out for the, him to load the trucks and get the truck on the road. The main roads weren't too, too bad. They were pretty much salted pretty good and back down to bare asphalt. Side roads had a little bit of slush on them. But that's, uh, so that held us up a little bit. And so right now, you know, we're just getting the concrete put in. We, we do use a water reducer in this so we can pour that 4,000 PSI mix, you know, a little bit looser than probably most of you guys pour, but the water reducer just keeps it good and strong without adding water. And then uh, we're going to get it screeded out. We've got, you know, with the 125 degree wa hot water, that's get, that gets mixed into the mix, plus a little bit of accelerator in it. Plus, inside the garage, it's actually pretty warm in here once we get that door closed. It's about 70 degrees in here. It's gonna, the mix is going to set up really good for us today. And, you know, the key is where they need it really good and flat is just, I just keep checking it with a laser. And, you know, we just want to make sure that within 10, 12, that's a 14-foot screed, actually 14 feet, that this thing is, is as flat as we could possibly get it using the laser and the way we screed. And, we're, we're pretty used to getting things flat. It's what most of our floors are that we do anyway, unless we're doing the garage and they want it sloped. So you can see Darren and I are pulling that back now just by kick screeding a little bit. Luke's back in the truck back in as close as he can get. There was quite a big overhang over there, so it kept the truck away quite a ways. And then uh, that's, that's just part of the process there. And, you can see how nice and level that gets as we screed it. Okay. 
but we're making sure we yank up on that wire for you guys really good and for those of you guys that watch a lot of my videos I've, I've said before once you get that concrete underneath the wire the wire doesn't go back down on the dirt even if you step on it the aggregate in the concrete holds it up off the dirt at least um, if you don't put bricks under it or, or uh, slab bolsters under it at least you know it's not going all the way back down to the bottom so we're yanking up on it really really good and this was the heavy gauge wire too not the light gauge so it's a lot more rigid and it's less it's less apt to go back down closer to the bottom it's more apt to stay up where you pull it up once it gets that aggregate under it we're just we're just pouring this out you know we're trying to get it down we're going to try to get it down close to the end and we definitely don't want to get too much concrete in here. We don't want to be shoveling it out or wheelbarrowing it out. So we're going to stop well in advance and just filling this up. And then if we gotta, if we got to have the driver just pour out a little bit more, we will. If we got to scoop out a few shovelfuls, that's not going to be But we definitely don't want to be making out a wheelbarrow full out of this. Here I am. I just keep checking with the laser every few feet. It goes from... This, the new slab here goes from, you know, about flush with the two ends, the end up by the concrete truck, and then the, the end where we started is flush. And then the two sides here, the, the existing slab really sloped quite a bit to the trench drain, so we're up quite a bit higher than that in order to keep this flat. There's a pipe there in the middle too, it's probably, probably has something to do for maybe the electrical on the lift. So we're going around that if you're wondering just what that thing, that pipe is sticking up in the middle for. And we're striking all our edges too. I, you know, not only am I checking them with a laser and then we're going around striking them with a straight edge, making sure that there's no little tiny low spots or no high spots. And that just helps ensure that this thing stays nice and flat. Now the, the, the guy doing the prep, he also drilled and pinned into the existing about every feet. I don't know, you can probably see some of that rebar sticking out. It was sticking out about six or eight inches out of the old slab. See right here, we had one little tiny low spot. And the screen shows it all if it's low or high. And then it also shows, you know, when you pull it over it, if it's, if it's perfect. So you can really tell by going around just checking your magged edges that way. already a little bit lower there. so I'm gonna have the driver just run a little bit more as you guys down and the speeding around here. Now we're just going around the pipe. So we'll get we'll get it around the pipe up there where Luke is on, on your right as you're looking at it. and then Darren's gonna step up in there and, and reach up and get it around that way and then we'll just mag around and get it good and flat. The pipe really isn't sticking up very high but did have tape over it, so it didn't get anything inside it. Nice and easy as, as we go with the speed. That's how we speed a lot of stuff right there. That's how we were taught. Um, and that's how I taught, you know, I taught Darren and, and Darren and I taught Luke. And that's how we learned how to speed right there. You don't necessarily need to use a vibrating or a power speed on this. It's kind of small, although we do have one in the truck. But for us, something this small, it's just as easy to speed it this way. And I don't know, I just, I just feel like sometimes we have better control of the, the flatness sometimes too when you're grabbing right on the screen and you're, you're the one putting the pressure on each end you can see they're both looking at the end making sure they're scoring just right and that's how we keep things good and accurate that way
Now the concrete was pretty warm today when it showed up. They increased the temperatures in the water, and as you can see, as I was bull floating, it was it was already setting up on us pretty good. So that's a really good sign, and you know we got it in plenty of time, so we didn't have to struggle getting it in. Just bull floating was a little bit more work than normal, and then we went right from bull floating, washing the tools, getting the tools loaded, right back to finishing here. Now what I'm doing now is I know it's going to crack over that green pipe. There was probably a couple inches over that pipe. And the pipe is in there just so the water can keep flowing underneath the slab from the, from the trench drains on the parts of the garage on either side of this. So, you know, rather than come back and saw a joint over it, we'll just, we'll just cut this groove in there and we'll make it crack right there. And then as the boys are finishing today, they'll just run a hand groover through it and kind of clean it up, touch it up, make it look nice. And that'll that'll prevent it from just cracking on its own right there. So that's what we're doing right now, kind of using like a torpedo groover. This thing makes the joint nice and straight. And, you know, all the handles, you can put all kinds of handles on that thing, go as far as you want almost. So that's kind of what me and Darren are doing right now. All right, so that went in pretty good. Seven and a half yards, pretty hot, setting up really good. So we got a joint cut over that pipe, because it's gonna crack over it anyway, so we cut the joint there. We'll hand tool that, make it look better. And then this edge right here, all they wanted us to do was taper it back down to six, from six inches out to match this. The other side's not too bad. So that's about what we're gonna do now. Yeah, like I said, this slab that we're doing has to be flat. The original slab all slopes to the trench drain in the middle, so there's going to be kind of like a trip edge there if we just leave it. So the guy we're working for just wanted us to taper it down, back down to the slab that we're matching six inches in because they needed so many, uh, they needed the width of that, you know, to be at least 14 feet for the lift and we were 14 and a half feet, so six inches. You can see we're tapering it back down, and that way it just won't be like a sharp edge. You can walk up and down over that. Alright, so that's going to do it. Uh, Darren and Luke will stay here. They'll hand trowel this smooth. It's, they just need a smooth finish. They really just needed a flat area for that lift, like I said. So we'll get it magged out with that. We'll get that, we'll get that groove fixed up. And then these guys will probably hand trowel this twice and that'll be done for this. So thanks for watching. We'll see you on the next one.